by popular demand, I'm going to create a tutorial about how to design an environment for SteamVR and upload it to the workshop. Um, and because I know it, not a huge amount of people know how to do this, I'm also going to teach you how to um, bake some lighting in Blender and export an OBJ uh, properly. Export a proper OBJ uh, that can be used by SteamVR. So the first things we're going to do is delete the camera and delete the lamp. That default lamp is gross and we don't need a camera. So that's why we're doing that. Second thing is switch to Cycles Render Engine up at the top there because Blender Render is gross, but Cycles is the best. Um, and now we're going to create our environment. I'm just going to create a little plane. Oh, um, remember these units here on these squares are meters. They look a lot smaller than meters, but they are indeed meters. A person standing on this plane would be about this tall. The person. Um, and the largest playing space is going to be about four meters. So keep that in mind when you're creating uh, your, your background. Oh, and the smallest playing space is going to be like this kind of thing. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to make my space a little bit bigger than four meters. Because um, four meters is the maximum, but maybe people don't want little the edges of the ground to be right out there. And I'm also going to make mine a perfect square. It might make sense to make it sort of a rectangle shape. But I'm going to make mine a square. And I'm just going to do a little box with a rim. Reset the normals outwards. And that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to delete this face on the bottom because nobody's going to ever see it. And we do not need that. I'm also going to erase our person because we don't really need that either. Um... And then uh, you can press Shift Z to look at what your your area will look like rendered. And this is what the lighting is going to look like baked onto it. It's going to look like uh, this sort of thing. Oh, and also, um, if you don't know this, you should definitely switch your your uh, rendering device over to GPU from CPU. Um, and I think you might have to do something in the in the user preferences of Blender to get that option. Um, but look that up because I don't remember exactly what you do. Um, but GPU rendering is way faster for obvious reasons. There's a reason uh, and GPUs are there and things and games don't get rendered on the CPU. Okay, so obviously this is really dark um, and not super great looking. So we could brighten the world, could bring that up, but I'm actually going to leave the world dark um, and I'm going to just create some lights in here. And because Cycles is awesome, we can create mesh lights that, um, that emit light. They don't have to be, you know, fake, like point lights or anything that uh, sometimes have to be used. So I'm just gonna, this is similar to the one that I, the, uh, the environment that I published. I'm just gonna do some glowing spheres here. Edit mode and just like roughly put them in the corners. There we go. And then I want to create a material on those, which is, I'm going to call lights. And we're going to give it um, an emissive surface, an emission strength of like five. Let's see how that looks, rendering it again a little bit better. They look like they're not really lighting the whole thing though. I'll do seven. That looks nice. All right, and then this main, this just like boring flat plane here is not very interesting underneath your feet. So I'm going to add something that makes it a little bit more enticing. I'll grab the checker. I wonder if I can do the checker deselect here. There's this cool tool called, oh yeah, look at that. If you select a bunch of faces or vertices or whatever, you can do checker deselect and then select the checkerboard pattern of them. And do that. Oh, and look at that. Much nicer. Maybe a little bit too strong there. Casting some weird shadows. Yeah, that is much more nice looking than what we had before. And because it's still a little unclear when you look at that, like, 
what's going on there. I'm going to make the embedded ones a slightly different color. So we're going to make a material because we don't have a material on that yet. Called main. Create another one called dark. Assign the dark material to those selected faces and just make it a little bit darker. All right. There we have our sort of uh, chessboard playing area pattern. I am going to begin to bake the lighting. So to bake lighting, you usually want objects to all be condensed into one object, which is what we have to do to make this an OBJ anyway. So as long as we don't have any modifiers on either of these, which we don't, we can safely combine them into one object and nothing changes. Everything looks exact exactly the same. All right. Next, you're going to want to split your view, open up the UV image editor, and in the UV image editor, we can UV unwrap, we have to UV unwrap this, and we can do that a number of ways. Um, I find the, the best for light mapping, the most efficient for light mapping is, if you press U, it brings up the UV mapping window, light map pack, wow, who would have thought? And then before you press OK, check new image and however big we want this image to be. I'm going to do 512 because this is my tutorial, but you're going to probably want a bigger image than that. For my circle stage environment, I used uh, 2048 by 2048. And for another one I'm working on, I'm using 4096 by 4096. But I'm going to stick with 512. And then pack quality 12 is good. With If you have a lot, a lot of faces, you should maybe turn that down a little bit, but... Um, It'll just take a long time, it won't crash or anything. And then margin, um, I'm going to do 0 0.05. This is how much space is in between each faces. Although since it's 512, that's not high resolution, I might leave it at 0 0.1. If you have a higher resolution image, you can afford to move the faces closer together because you have more pixels padding, padding them. Okay, hit OK, and here we are. These look like the faces from the spheres right there. They look kind of funny. Um, and those will just be white. And it's a little bit, it's sort of a waste of space to have those in different places because I know all of the faces on the spheres are just going to be pure white. Um, but it would be a bunch of work to move them over each other. If you're worried about um, resolution, you can, if you know if something, a face is going to be the same color as another face, you can just put it over the other face. It's always a good idea. Um, but we don't need to do that right now. All right, so this next step is a pain if you have too many materials. Oh, and also did it create that image? Did it not create that? Okay, there it is, light map. You want to select that image light map when you have all these faces selected in UV editing mode. For some reason, this helps it export the OBJ better. Um, all right, I'm gonna split my viewport again and go to the node editor. So this next step, as I, as I said, is a big pain if you have a lot of materials. Fortunately, we only have three. What you have to do is create a um, input, uh, no, 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 texture, image texture node, and select that image. And make sure this node is the only one selected in this material. Then you can copy it, control C, control V it into here, make sure it's the only one selected, and repeat with all of your materials. This tells Blender Cycles that that's the texture you're going to bake this material to when it's time to bake. Oh, and guess what? It's time to bake. Move our annoying SteamVR beta out of the way. And we're going to bake combined. So there are a lot of options for baking. Um, often you bake ambient occlusion or normals. In fact, those are usually the only ones I bake. Um, but Combined is going to take all of the lighting information and bake it all. Oh, and another note, you cannot really bake um, glossy materials, reflective materials. You can try, but you're not going to get, like, if you think about it, like, as your view changes, a reflection would change. Like, if I had a reflection of the ball, it would be, like, here, right here, and it would be over here from this view. Um, you cannot bake reflections in Blender to a texture. <laughs> That's what I'll say. Um, you're going to want to stick with just diffuse materials for these, uh, for baked textures. Like I did, all of my materials are completely diffuse. 
and then we can set the sampling renders at 128 samples that's a lot I mean that's not a lot but that's a lot for a test run I'm gonna just do like 12 with those 12 samples I will press break bake break and you can see we have a baked image here and if you press alt Z and go into textured viewport you get this which looks a little bit odd but if you go into the um, if you press N, you can bring up the sidebar, go into shading, hit shadeless. This is the shadeless texture. So this is our baked lighting, essentially. Obviously, we're going to bake it um, with higher samples, which will give us um, a higher quality bake. But it looks really good right now, and I think I can be confident that it will look really good when we bake it at a higher sample, at a higher number of samples. Okay, select it again, set this number here. You know what we can do? We can render it and we can look, oh, stops at 32. Give it an unlimited number of samples and watch it until the noise goes away. You can see the path tracing sample up there. It gets no less and less and less noisy in an image there. I'd say, I mean, there's still a little bit of noise. I'd say we could safely go to, you know, 650, almost 700. Um, and this is a small texture. If you have a larger texture, you might want to do things in your project to reduce noise, like turning down the light bounces, the number of light bounces for each ray. Um, because you can see this would take a pretty long time, even just for the uh, 512 by 512 texture. All right, there we go. Here's our final baked map. And it is still a little bit noisy, but since this is a tutorial, I'm not going to try to reduce all that noise. Another thing you can do is run it through a separate program that, uh, and you can do like a surface blur a filter on it, uh, which can get rid of some of the noise. I know Photoshop has that filter. Uh, if you go into textured viewport mode, you can see our wonderful baked lighting. And there are a few artifacts on the lamps which come from, you can see right here, some of these gray pixels being right beside there. Um, what we can do for that, this is good if we have some like specific objects that are lamps. You can select parts of them, control L, select the whole thing. Now we have all the lamps selected. Um, and what I should be able to do, I think I can faces and um, can I do it? In, yeah, individual origins. And I can take each of these faces and because they're all white, it doesn't matter if I scale them down. So now this is the easiest way to get them farther away from the edges. And now if I look at texture viewport mode, they should be completely white. And again, um, if you have a low resolution image like mine, you should probably give it larger margins because obviously um, whatever I gave it wasn't enough because you could see some of the, you can still see like you know, that right there. There's a little bit of, um, and there's some, there's some of that stuff here too. Uh, so just give it a, a larger margin and that will go away. All right. The next step with our created environment is to export it to an OBJ that SteamVR knows how to use, which is a little bit daunting because SteamVR gets a little confused sometimes.